And welcome back to another episode of The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, the show where I, the curator, discuss my personal favorite show of all time, personal favorite franchise of all time, Doctor Who. And uh, we are reaching the end of another year very, very soon. And uh, what better way to celebrate this, uh, the end of this new year with uh, talking about something that came up in the last couple of episodes on the show itself, you know, the show, the episode we've been waiting over a year to see. Uh, I started this uh, month with talking about which characters I think should return from the classic era of the show. Obviously, we just recently had um, the return of the Celestial Toymaker as well as uh, Melanie Bush. And uh, in uh, previous week's episode, we talked about which characters from the modern series I think should we... Uh, that is me and Sora think should come back uh, in the upcoming Shurigatwa series uh, because, of course, we had uh, the return of Donna Noble and, of course, uh, Wilf. Uh, so why don't we just start off with, uh, with uh, ra or rather continue this with just talking about which characters we think should come back from the expanded media of Doctor Who, like we've recently seen with Beep the Meep and the Roth Warriors in uh, the Star Beast. And uh, I could not have picked a better person to have this conversation with than Snark. Yes. I always love your reactions whenever I talk about some of the random, more obscure stuff from Doctor Who media all across different platforms. How sure. are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, the big thing is you remember like the names of things like a f shaking rubber mat on the ground and stuff like that. You know what that is. I don't know. I just oh, think yeah. it's funny. Now, of course, we before that, we got to talk about the birthday section, of course. Of course. And uh, I mean, let me tell you, we got some pretty big ones uh, oh. this week. We got some big ones. I think you'll enjoy most of them. And of course, we are going from the 12th of December all the way to the 18th. And uh -oh. on the, uh, the uh, 12th of December, we have the one, the only Mr. Bill Nye. <laughs> of course, you only had one episode of Doctor Who, Vincent and the Doctor, mm. but it's freaking Bill Nye. I sure. mean, like, he was in the Pirates of the Caribbean movies as uh, Davy Jones. He was in Harry Potter as Rufus Scrimger. Harry Potter and the Dirty Hollows Part 1. To be specific, he was in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Shaun mm -hmm. of the Dead. Like... Love Actually. Love Actually, yeah. It, it's freaking Christmas Bill time. Nye. Christmas time, guys. Gotta say Love Actually. So, of course, he's gotta be on the list. Mm -hmm. Now, someone less known, but more... Uh, prominent in Doctor Who, also on the 12th, the lovely Miss Sarah Sutton, who of course played the character of Nyssa during the Fifth Doctor's era, and of course she came back for a multitude of big Finnish re uh, reappearances and reemergences. And uh, it's a timely in birthday. In even involved in some of the the topics we might be discussing today. Who knows? Stay tuned for more. Uh, as I try to get a better vantage point with my mouse on the oh, 13th. Yeah, have another one from the same episode as Bill Nye, but left quite an impact, Mr. Tony Curran. Sure, of course. Of course, played uh, Vincent van Gogh in uh, the episode. Gosh. One of the, just, the episode, the performance, the storytelling. The monster is the, uh, yeah. iffy, but it's it, the, the entire episode hinges on this I think guy it's his one movie. of those episodes where it doesn't matter if you've never seen Doctor Who before, you can play this to anyone and they'll enjoy the episode just as it is. You don't need to know everything about Doctor Who to enjoy the episode, I think. Case in point, Taco watched this episode and loved it. Taco? Yeah. Is that a real person? Well, I mean, we're friends with a guy named Soda, so anything yeah. is possible. I like my buddy Hot Dog. Hey, uh, hold on, hold on. Fun fact, hot dog's the name of Jughead's dog. 
and uh, also on the 13th, that, that wasn't wasn't expecting that, uh, Mr. Hamish Wilson, who of course has seen this picture, he played Jamie for a couple of episodes while Jamie's actual actor, Fraser Hines, uh, had chicken pox and couldn't really perform. So they were, they very quickly wrote into the story a, a subplot about Jamie losing his face and getting <laughs> replaced by this guy. I like it. Like they actually thinking. wrote it into the story. And they got like the most Scottish named guy that you can get to. Of course. Of course. You got to yeah. get the most Scottish guy possible. Mm-hmm. Seriously, uh, The Mind Robber, none of the episodes are missing, thankfully. So you can watch it at your convenience whenever you want. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the 15th, we have Mr. I have no idea how to pronounce his first oh, name. Boy. Oh, boy. Pennant. Pennant Roberts. This guy. Sure. Uh, he directed. Uh, several episodes from uh, from Doctor Who, including The Face of Evil, The Sun Makers, The Pirate Planet, Warriors of the Deep, Time Lash, and Shada. Although oh. to say that he directed Shada is a bit of an overstatement because if you remember the story of the of the episode, yeah, uh, it was it was kind of cut short. And uh, from one director to the other, we got on the sixteenth Ashley Way who uh, directed uh, several episodes, but mostly he produced a lot, sorry, directed episodes from the Sarah Jane Adventures and uh, Torchwood, uh, na- namely the episode Captain Jack Harkness. Yes, that's the name one of an episode. End of Days, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, Reset, Something Borrowed, Exit Wounds. Uh, and uh, that's it for Torchwood from Do- Doctor Who. He directed the Hungry, uh, the Hungry Earth and Cold Blood. And from... Sarah Jane Adventures, he he directed uh, Death of the Doctor, and yes, that's the name of another episode, The Empty Planet, Sky, The Curse of uh, Clyde Langer, and he even directed Attack of the Grass. If you don't know what that is, I highly recommend checking that one out. It's a, It was an interesting experience, let's put it that way. That's not usually what uh, you used to sell a television program. An interesting. Experience. I never said it was a television program. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, gosh, oh boy, Grask. All right. You, you, it sounded like you had another point there. No, I had nothing. Oh, okay. I was hoping you were going to say something. If it's not another television program that he directed for the Sarah Jane Adventures, then I don't know. Well, I didn't say what he directed for the Sarah Jane Adventures. Ooh. Oh boy. All I'll right. send you a link after we're done filming. Now, also on the six on the sixteenth. The man needs no introduction, but I'll do it anyway. He is the one and only, the man, the myth, the legend, Nicholas Courtney. The Brigadier. Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart. Of course, he played several other characters in Doctor Who over the years, but, I mean, it's... It's the Brigadier that everyone remembers remembers him from. Of course, he played the TARDIS and Zagreus, which was an interesting uh-huh. uh, experience. But, I mean, it's like, he's the guy. He was the guy. And uh, thank you. Tell me, did you tell me that he used to wear like a fake, was that a fake mustache that he used to wear? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. my gosh. He can pull it from, off. Yeah, from his. Also, no one pulls off a fleur de lis vest. Like the Brigadier, I can tell Oh, yeah, that. he pulls off anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from uh, the, I believe, from the invasion all the way to um, uh, Terror of the Zygons. That was a fake mustache. Crazy. And uh, here's another one that only appeared in one episode of Torchwood. Born on the 17th. But I'm pretty sure you can easily recognize the name of Ernie Hudson, right? Sure. Yes. The he loves this town. Spot. He loves this town. Oh, yeah. He definitely loves this town. Oh. And uh, who are you going to call? That's right. That's and right. Uh, speaking of that, that season of Torchwood, uh, the main antagonist of that whole season the season we do not talk about, was also born on the 17th. The one, the only, Mr. 
Bill Pullman. <laughs> yep, as uh, the character of Oswald Danes. I did say there are several big ones uh, this ep- in this week. Oh, and also on the 17th, the lovely Miss Jacqueline Hill. Who of yeah. course, uh, Barbara Wright. Based, technically the first companion of uh, Doctor Who of all time. She also came back to play a different role in the episode Megalos. But, I mean, it's it, it's Barbara that everyone remembers her for. for and, uh, yeah, her and Ian Chesterton, they both set the gold standard for Doctor Who companions. Uh-huh. And, uh, really, the archetype for uh, all... Uh, they were the prototype for all the other companions uh, that came after them. They walked... So all the other companions could run. And also on the 17th, Mr. Alec Wheel. He was he was a senior cameraman. Uh, essentially. Except nice. he was he was a cameraman for no less than 159 episodes of Doctor Who, Jeez. ranging from Destiny of the Daleks all the way to the greatest show in the galaxy. And even, even Delta and the Bannerman, even though, even though that was uncredited. So, uh, yeah, from the fourth Doctor all the way to the eighth. And uh, finally, to wrap up this uh, this extensive list, we had all these big heavy hitters like Ernie Hudson, Nicholas Courtney, Bill Nye, Bill Pullman. And we're going to wrap up with, on the 18th, Josh Dallas, and uh, yep, this picture that you're seeing right here is the only credit Doctor Who credit he's got. He, I mean, he's literally credited as Node Two. Sure. In Silence of the Library and Force of the Day. He was in Silence of the Library, but I mean, he's Prince Charming in Once Upon a Time. So that that gives me the reason to put him on this list. Okay, and of course he. Kind of a blink and you'll miss it, but he was also uh, f- uh, Fandral in the first Thor movie, which was, of course, then replaced with Zachary Levi. Oh, and, uh, yeah, so the wonderfully diverse list of people we had today, thank you all. We quite literally could not do this without you. Now, on to the main topic for today's uh, show. Now, let me preface this uh, first by saying the, the title of this episode says, Which Comic Character Should Come Back Next? Uh, referencing, of course, uh, Beep the Meep, which we already talked about. You know, comic book uh, character made sure, the transition sure. into uh, the TV show. But we were, we're uh, not limiting, it, limiting this list ju- to just comic book characters. Oh, we're just talking about characters from all over Doctor Who. It's just... I, in all fairness, in all honesty, I couldn't really think of a better way to phrase the title for the day's episode. So that's what I, the one I went with. Expanded, Expanded universe. universe. That that kind of felt a little too long, and it's it's kind of it, what really hurts is it hurts this fact is that Doctor Who doesn't actually have a definitive name for its expanded universe. Sure. You know, like Star Wars has. Legends and canon and whatnot. Doctor Who doesn't really have a defined name, but whatever. So we talked about this beforehand, and you certainly have a character you want to see back. Of course. Or rather, make the transition into Doctor Who proper. And of course, I am talking about Miss Charlie Pollard. Yep. Right? Uh, Of course. Yeah, like uh, those are the first big finish stories that I listen to is like usually like the first uh, doctor you watch is usually your favorite one. Well, this is the first uh, companion I got for the big finish stories and stuff like that. So, and I thought I'd got through her whole arc. It turns out there's a box set of her just doing stuff on her own, but uh, yeah, I've done, I've listened to pretty much all of her stuff. Uh, I think she would make a great addition just to live action television as well. Her story was really fun. Maybe you could do without her sister. She, her sister doesn't have to oh, take yeah. Definitely without her sister. Yeah. But I think Charlie and uh, especially the eighth doctor worked really well together. They had to, uh, so great stories, some not so great ones, but uh, 
yeah, like the Zagreus stuff, all that kind of thing. Well, you know, she was she was fun. She was fantastic. And to support what you're saying, they they have a, a, a legitimate re- reason to bring her back because they actually kind of canonized her in uh, the Night of the Doctor. You know, the episode where the Eighth Doctor regenerates uh-huh. uh, that little tiny mini episode. He actually mentions her by name. He mentions her. And Kara, oh, okay. yes, 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 and of course Lucy Miller and Hamzen, and all, all the way up to, to uh, Molly O'Sullivan from like so not all the five thousand companions the Eighth Doctor had, but right. just you know, some of the uh, some of the big Finnish ones. So yeah. they could definitely bring Charlie. Like they they already acknowledged they she did, and they they brought back the Eighth Doctor again for uh, Jody Whittaker's final episode. Mm-hmm. So. There's clearly a demand for the Eight Doctor to come back to Doctor yes. Who proper, and I mean, if you're gonna, if you're just gonna have like flashback scenes of the Doctors and other companions, you could literally shoot several quick scenes with the Eight Doctor and Charlie Pollard, or you know what, screw or the it, sixth, or the Sixth Doctor, you or know, the Sixth even, Doctor, yeah. yeah, because he also came back for Power mm-hmm. of the Doctor, but you know what, just screw it. If you're gonna do this big, exp- extensive. MCU like universe. Yep. Give us a mini series of just the eight Doctor and Charlie Pollard. Yep. Going places like it's already written. Know? It's already done. It's already yeah. done, guys. It's a, it's not you a lot of work. Base, done. You already have the basis. You already you, you don't you don't have to you don't have to do too much explaining on who Charlie is and what's her relationship with the eight Doctor. It, it the opposite. It'll actually give people motivation to check out the big finish stuff mm-hmm. so it's it's uh, if they could do movie. if they could do a live action run up through the grab like from the one where uh, uh he finds her on the on the uh, blimp up to the grab just kind of bring things down to a four episode arc or something like just do a four episode arc through the grab and just have that way you give that way you give the eighth doctor more time like he should have gotten in the first place he's like uh, horribly underused, horribly underused. Just one TV movie, a quick flash scenes, and a couple of specials, and that's it. Yep, need more of him. He's great. He's a, he 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 is a gold mine of untapped potential. Mm-hmm. That's all we're saying here. Sure. And speaking of gold mines of untapped potential, I'm pretty sure you could have guessed that I was gonna bring up this character, Bernie Summerfield. Sure, of course. Yeah, I mean, she's definitely one of the most popular compa- non-TV companions of all time. She's credited as being one of the companions that actually traveled with the Doctor the longest. Yeah. One of. Uh, of course, she was introduced in novel form, but she very quickly took on a life on her own. She's a character in her own right now to the point where she kind of has adventures where she basically doesn't really need to... Uh, the 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 doctor connection and of course she as seen in this picture she met with an alternate doctor in the form of the david warner unbound doctor she right. met an, an uh, alternate version of the master in the form of mark gatiss's doctor mm-hmm. uh, and my master sorry and she i mean she's connected to so many of the other characters from the doctor who mythos she was literally river song's teacher in university so like she, she's this character is so intrinsically linked. What are you doing? I'm tying, I'm sewing the fabric of Doctor Who together with Bernie. Or Sanders. would you say that you're weaving the web of time? How dare you? Come on, what? It's a Doctor Who reference. What's wrong with that? Weaving, what do you think this is? Oh, it could have very well have been weaving. I don't know. I don't even know if I was doing the sewing thing right. Not like I know how to sew either. Me neither. I'm- I mean, I, I had to sew my ranks when I was in the military, and I did a, shit, a such a horrible job that I was like, "I'm not, I'm not touching this." Hey, mom, take here this, take this. Smart. Uh, so uh, yeah, Burning Summerfield. Uh, like I said, she's so intrinsically tied to to the Doctor Who mythos that it it'll be a crime not to bring her into the Doctor Who universe at some point or another. What do you think? I haven't followed her at all, really, through the things. I just know of her from the big finish, and she's shown up briefly in some of the stories. 
but I know that she is a huge part of Big Finish, like a huge part. So it, it wouldn't be right if we were going to be including Big Finish characters and characters that had come back to for Doctor Who, like who could actually make it to the show. Uh, yeah, I mean, to not have Bernie Summerfield on the on the list would be bizarre. Yeah, I mean, she, originally she started off as a book companion in, in the novels uh, with the Seventh Doctor, the New Adventures. And then she she, she was and so a popular, robot she, a robot cat. Yes, Who's that guy. Why isn't he yeah. on the list? He better be. I mean, I figured oh. just having him here associated with okay, that's uh, good enough. Bernie Summerfield is it would would be more than enough. But yeah, yeah, as this image illustrates, she very quickly took on a life on her own, and she just spun off and had her own series of novels uh, that was actually really really popular. In the 90s, so much so that they actually, she was the first character that they that came into Big Finish. Before Big Finish was even doing Doctor Who stories, they started just adapting Bernie Summerfield novels into Big Finish episodes. Ooh. And then slowly that uh, gained a lot of traction. And that's when they brought Doctor Who in. So in a way, this you, you can thank this character for Big Finish existing. Sure. Like, we talked earlier about uh, Ian and Barbara uh, walking so all the other companions could run. Without this character, you do not get this character. Right. Put that into perspective for a second. And one of the other characters that uh, this character is so intrinsically tied to, and another character on our list, is, of course, Irvin Braxiatel. Mm-hmm. Who was a, a, at her wedding, and of course, I mean, why hasn't this guy been a, added to Doctor Who yet? It's the Doctor's brother. W what the hell? I mean, yeah. he was supposed to be in the William Hartnell era in an episode that got scrapped, which then got adapted into a novel, and then, then that's more or less where the, the character was introduced. And like Bernie Summerfield, he took on a life of his own. Just yeah. became its own independent thing in novels, in comics, in uh, Big Finish. Like he's such a major character. Like, wh why, why not include him in anything? Yeah, it doesn't make any sense why he hasn't shown up. He was um, uh, Romana's tutor in the academy. He yep. fought in the Time War with Ace. He did so much stuff. And of course, of course, you gotta mention you got you can't really talk about Braxiatel without mentioning the Braxiatel collection, which was referenced in a Doctor Who episode on, on TV. Hmm. So like the Braxiatel collection is again such a major, major part of the Doctor Who mythos. It, it, it it's already mentioned in one of the episodes. It'd be a shame not to include this character on the TV show, if for no other reason than for, for us again to, to, to have this joke. <laughs> like yeah, that's a good one. And oh, Brax, with, good old Brax. One of my, one of my favorite lines from uh, the Gallifrey series is like, "Do you trust Brax? Do you trust Brax? You tell Leela? Does anyone?" <laughs> good point. Yeah. And speaking of like, the whole Gallifrey series is a. A swell of untapped potential. Now, of yes. course, I wouldn't change much from uh, the series itself, but you can bring elements from the Gallifrey series into Doctor Who. Now, actually, talk 100%. about making do what you did for for Charlie and Karis and all the other uh, eight Doctor characters. Mm -hmm. Ma make them relevant in the universe. You don't have to yep. overly explain. Just you know, mention the Time Lord Civil War and Pandora and all of that. And I think the best character to bring into the fold to make this a reality is of course Narvin. Yep. I love Narvin. One of my favorite time, not time Lords who isn't the doctor, which for sure. You know, 100%. Even that is a stretch, but a I, guy we've talked about on this show quite a bit, I think. Yeah. He's, I mean, he's very much a, a, a linchpin in the Gallifrey series. And of course the Gallifrey series went, went in, a, in a kind of a different direction in the last couple of years. Uh, but Norman does still show up occasionally, and he does uh, eventually pop up all, all over uh, different places in Doctor Who and Big Finish. And, you know, he's uh, 
He's definitely a, a character that that would work well with the Doctor. The Doctor and Norman have a certain type of chemistry, right? And you know, we uh, we we I think you uh, told me once that you want to you want to have Romana back, right? Right. So, I mean, well, I said for especially for this show, especially just Romana three. I think would if they could do something with Romana three, I think it'd be incredible. But just having Romana back would be terrific. Yeah, I'd love any version of Romana. But when you say Romana three, you mean you mean the uh, the Juliet Lando version, mm -hmm. or just on your own, your completely new original? No, I'm talking movie. Juliet Juliet Lando, so we could have Drusilla from Buffy on the show. That'd be fun. I mean, again, untapped potential. Mm -hmm. You know, just bring the whole uh, Gallifrey crew into Doc into uh, the Doctor Who show. I think would work really, really well. One hundred percent. Just yeah, make it a show. They could just make it a show. You want to? You yeah. want to do something? Just make Gallifrey a show. Yeah. You and never do anything with the Doctor with Gallifrey, anyways. Yeah. Okay. Or, or I mean, in the modern series, all you really use Gallifrey for is just destroy it, uh -huh. and then rebuild it, and then destroy it again. Yep. So like, well, what the? What's the point? At least in the classic series, whenever the Doctor went back to Gallifrey, they they made some good stuff. Some bad stories are granted, but some good stories on Gallifrey. So it's a political thriller style show set in the universe of Doctor Who. Like what else do you want? It's great. Yeah. And uh if you're bringing Gallifrey back, Ooh. for good reason, yeah. Might as well talk about uh something associated with Gallifrey, but could, you know, just turn into a storyline in and of itself. You've already mentioned this. Zagreus sits inside your head. Zagreus lives among the dead. Zagreus sees you in your bed and eats you when you're sleeping. Uh -huh. Now, of course, we already have the story of Zagreus. But it's such a, an interesting concept. They can change it up and make it make something new and original with it on the TV show. Right? Yep. Yeah, and they could use it as like the backdoor pilot for the Gallifrey show too. So there you go. Yeah, just like uh, the original Zagreus was the backdoor pilot for the Gallifrey series on Big Finish. Yep. And you don't even have to stick to, to uh, the, this crew that you're seeing right here of these specific doctors. You can just make it. Uh, you make, make it your own. Make with you can, that's a, it's a, it gives you a great excuse to bring back some of the older doctors mm -hmm. in different roles, like you did in the Zagreus episode and you know just like this greatest episode bring back the actors of previous companions to play different characters there's, mm -hmm. there's i think we're going to use this episode this word a lot in this episode a well of untapped potential i think that's a phrase a term <laughs> a phrase, whatever and the one word one word to rule them all now, here's a uh, something that I I think wasn't really used well enough. The reborn master, played yeah. by Alex McQueen, the the funny master. Let's put, let's call it that way. And of course, this kind of clash with the John Sim master, who kind of earned the title of the funny master, but. I think this guy wasn't given enough to work with. Now, granted, needs to be said at this point of recording, still have not listened to the Dark Eye series, which was his introduction. I've only listened to him on other uh, appearances, like the um, the the Monthly Rage range and Masterful. So this is the, really the only thing I have to go on. But still, I mean, it's, it's such a limited pool of episodes. I think that there's so much more they could have done with this master. Sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it would be be good. You're familiar with this master. What do you think? Yeah, like why not give him a run? Uh, especially if you like, if they can do it, so they could just start putting different universes out there. There's so far, what is it, fourteen different doctors? Gonna about to be fifteen? Is that what it's supposed to be? We're not. We're not sure how it's going to run anymore. I mean, but there's the, there's the different universes. Use different masters. Like you can. Like there's there's space 
and time for them all. <laughs> There's enough wibbly wobbly for the time for all the all time. Right. I guess so. Yeah, use it. It's great. Yeah, masterful was fun, but that's the only thing I know him from. And of course, we, of course, he will forever be remembered for this iconic line: "You tried to kill me with biscuits." <laughs> uh, I love that. I love that line. Uh, no. What? There's worse ways to go. Yeah, especially if you're the master. Hmm. Uh, and here's a, here's a character I'd like to see back, but it does have some problems with it. Cardinal Alestra. Of course, she was right. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the main main um, driving forces during the Time War. Of course, played by Jacqueline King, who sadly is no longer with us. However, they replaced her with Caroline Pickles hmm. for the Gallifrey series, and they they kind of did a switcheroo of like the proper Cardinal Alistra is on the front lines with the War Doctor, but back on Gallifrey, they somehow brought back her first incarnation to be with Leela. Wibbly wobbly. It's a weebly wobbly thing, but I mean, what's the point of having the um, the uh, gimmick of Time Lords regenerating into different actors if you're not gonna use it? Right. Am I right? Yep, you're right. So that that's why, like in every almost every series of Gallifrey in uh, the Time War, there's a different Rassilon almost. So right. So they can use that. I mean, you can they can use the Caroline Pickles version. You could cast a different actress. You can even cast an actor, even though I'm kind of stolen the idea of this being a woman. But there's some interesting stuff that you can do here. And just you know, I know that on the as far as the TV show is concerned, they pretty much lay late uh, the Time War to rest. But you know, the guy that came up with the Time War is now back. And the showrunner's seat, so maybe we can see some more stuff. But also, if they're going to do a Gallifrey series, you got to put her in there. You have to have someone who can go up against Ramona every once in a while. So, yeah, and I mean, uh, I mean, you can't. You know what? You could also have Dark Hill. I didn't put Dark Hill on the series on this list because she kind of was in the TV show, but mm -hmm. not by the same name. But whatever. Okay, so here's here's an, an, an interesting avenue I think they could explore. And one of the major, major rumors of spinoffs for Doctor Who coming up, like the, the favorite, if you will, is a unit series. Ooh, yeah. Right, now there is a unit series on Big Finish with Gemma Redgrave coming back, reprising her role as uh, Kate Stewart, and of course... Dang it, I'm kicking myself out for forgetting the name, but um, Osgood is back on the series. Osgood, before the map, before Missy killed her, obviously, they recently brought back somehow found a way to bring back Harry Sullivan. I don't know why, but yeah, sure. they brought uh, they had the master there, they had Missy, they had they had Cyberman, they had Axons, they had all the favorite, the unit favorites. And they also introduce their own uh, unique crew. Characters who are exclusive to that series, you now have an excuse to make them not so exclusive. And of course, I'm talking about uh, Captain Josh Carter, Colonel uh, Vikram Shindy, and of course, the man himself, Sam Bishop. Now, have you listened to any of the unit series? I haven't, but I, yeah, I'm looking forward to start listening to them. I'm a big unit guy from the show. So can, can, so can I spoil some stuff for you? Help yourself. I usually forget. All right. So, I mean, Josh is kind of have, kind of have this uh, slight crush on Osgood that's very, uh, very much hinted at times. Mm -hmm. but And he's, he's kind of perceived as like this, um, you know, he he's a, he's a captain. He's not, you know. He's not too bright. He's not too uh, uh, action orientated, but he's got a. He kind of has a secret weapon. 
Do you, do you want to know what his secret weapon is? Uh, is it kindness? No. Okay, what is it? So through some story plot re related things that I won't go over, he's kind of half Auton. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so he's got a plastic skeleton, which of course brings gives him certain advantages like super strength and he can go without uh, food for a while. So uh, yeah, he's he just can't be put in a microwave. Yeah, just keep him away from uh, from from uh, warm areas. Now there isn't really anything too special about uh, Vikram Shindi, but he's still a really really interesting character. That uh, is, he kind of breaks the mold of the traditional uh, mindless unit general. I mean, he's right. not quite a brigadier, but he's a he's he's a thinker. He th he he's very quick on his feet. He's he's not he doesn't rush into things. He he always thinks before he acts, and uh, he even managed managed to uh, make peace with some Tarans for a bit. Hmm. And of course, the I think the main. Fans of the unit series, the the main per person they want back is of course Sam Bishop, uh, played by Warren Brown. He's the fixer, if you catch my meaning. Like he's right. the special guy that you bring in only on special occasions, only in the really really tough missions when you need a, uh, a the the shall we say the a commando who can get things done. So he would be like a. He'd be like a John Clark from the uh, uh, Tom Clancy movies then, or Tom Clancy novels then. Uh, like you, I never read the novels. Oh, so... you never read like the Jack Ryan stuff or whatever. No, I'm sorry. Okay, well, John Clark's, Clark is very much a mercenary guy who comes in to fix things for him. That's... Yeah, I mean he's he's the guy that you you only call on special occasions, mm -hmm. which is a, is a way to get around how. Warren Brown is a very busy and, high, and very in demand actor, so you can only have him for like one episode every once in a while. And more to the point, he was in an episode of Doctor Who, Warren Brown, just not playing the same character. So he could definitely work well in Doctor Who. It was a, it was a, it was a fun episode. He was he had a really interesting part in it, but like watching it, I I rewatched it recently. I could not get the image of uh, him as a, a unit officer out of my head. And, of course, the character itself isn't just exclusive to the unit series. He has popped up in other places. He has appeared in the Ninth Doctor Adventures with Christopher Eccleston. He has appeared in, in one of the um, box sets for the Lady Christina with Michelle Ryan. So Ooh. he's definitely a, a, a character that can fit multiple scenarios in Doctor Who. And with you know, uh, Doctor Who, be, be seemingly, I'm assuming, is going to be a bit more unit orientated in the future than it was in the last couple of Doctors. That that's definitely a character that could uh, easily work um, for for this new direction that the series is going. And uh, that was the last of the big finish characters. Mm -hmm. So you. Um, you know the drill. Let's dive into some more obscure stuff. No oh way, right? And one of the one of the obscure stuff that I want to see Doctor Who brought to live action is the character Shade. Oh, you've shown me this guy before. Yeah, he's a Time Lords Black Ops office, a Black Ops operative. They were they weren't really they, they were not going for subtlety when they made this guy like. Basically, he's Mysterio. A, yeah, he's yeah, he's a creature of the shadows. He can pop up from a shadow. He can have his head removed. He can disappear. Whoa. Like much like Sam Bishop, he's like the the guy that the Time Lords call in to fix problems whenever they they don't want to get their hands dirty. Smart. And uh, he's an ally of the Doctor from time to time. And uh, yeah, he, he's he's not afraid to, to uh, go brutal. Uh, and uh, yeah. He's a, he's a he's a stealth operator operative. There really isn't much much else I can say about. It. He's the, that that's kind of his shtick, and of course the costume. Oh, you, sure. you gotta go for the costume, right? Oh yeah. There's no sense and, in there's no sense of bringing him if you're not gonna give him the costume. 
It's ridiculous. Yeah. One of my other favorite characters was introduced in the comics. Frobisher. <laughs> this is a character I've been advocating for for years. Years and years. Bring Frobisher to the TV show. Like, when, when people saw that Beep the Meep was going to be in the show, like, yeah. he was, like, the on everyone's mind. Like, bring uh, the character Frobisher. He's a... Uh, thank you. He's a shape-shifting whiffer drill from the planet Xeonon in the 67th century or something, or, or, rather, or rather. So, yeah, he can tra- shape-shift. He can turn into everyone, he, anything he likes, and he just happens to really like looking like a penguin. Well, they're always dressed up. Yeah. The, it's, it's very spiffy. And mm-hmm. he's got this... Uh, New York accent, and he's <laughs> he's uh he's a, and he's a detective. Mm-hmm. Like imagine Detective Pikachu as a penguin. Oh boy! And you no, know, the shape shifting stuff. Of course, there I can see the problems with this character. Of course, uh, he he would have to be a fully CGI companion. Which I mean, Doctor Who kind of has Disney money now, so they yeah. could pull it off. It's got to be cool. easier to do now than it was, say, 20 years ago. It can't be, yeah, it can't be, came back. It can't be horrific. Right. They've got to have CGI people in there before, I'm sure. Just as long as you bring back uh, Robert Jezik uh, to voice him, that that's mm-hmm. really what I'm looking for. Now, another reason I want to bring uh, Frobisher into this is because... He's tangentially tied to another character that pop regularly pops up in Doctor Who every once in a while. Dog Bolter. Ooh. He's a green lizard, green frog guy, businessman. Who... Seems unhappy. He looks yeah. like he's a little unhappy or something. A little unhappy. Someone must have crossed him. Sure. And yeah, he his whole shtick is he's trying is, is he's he owns a, a business a business he's very corrupt and he wants to get his hands on the TARDIS because he thinks it's go- only going to make him richer somehow and he mm-hmm. has popped up uh, in several different places went up against several different doctors uh, and oh look there's Frobisher again <laughs> have you seen the title <laughs> yeah well I just saw I just saw Frobisher actually with the hat on but, yeah. yeah. I like it. Another great reason to bring this character in, but I mean, mm-hmm. the title, right? Yep. The Maltese Penguin. The Maltese it's, Penguin. It's uh, a film of noir with a talking penguin. With a talking penguin and a cigar smoking frog man person. Sure. Dying yeah. Smoker guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, could bring an interesting dynamic to uh, the, the realm of Doctor Who. Now, uh, is another multi-platform thing that crisscrosses from different places. The Salacians. Sure. Salacians. Yep. I mean, I just love the image of armored shark people running around shooting people. Like, that, that, that's an image I like to see in live action with, you know, the now Disney CGI uh, budget money. Right. Why not? Why not? They were initially introduced in a uh, novel, and then the novel guy became a writer for Big Finish, and he kind of had the idea of bringing these guys into uh, Doctor Who proper by way of these um, Big Finish episodes. So why the hell not? Well, why not they make these guys legit parts of Doctor Who? Sure. Maybe they don't all have to be warrior guys. Maybe one of them could be like a teacher or something. Maybe one of them could be like a, I don't know, a banker. I mean, they don't all have to be so angry. From from what I, I mean, they're sharks. But no. from from what I gathered, war is like in their nature, in their species. Mm-hmm. But you could take some creative liberties, like you said. So nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And the final thing I want to see uh, uh, brought back. Okay. Today, this was a relatively shorter list. Uh, compared to uh, the classic and modern stuff, but just Stockbridge. 
You know, just Stockbridge is a city that regular, rather a town that regularly pops up every once in a while in Doctor Who from the comics, in some of the novels, some of the Big Finish episodes. There's an entire uh, trilogy of Big Finish episodes based around Stockbridge. And, you know, it's like it could be a nice place for different characters from different facets of Doctor Who to show up. And just, you know, hang out. As sure. you see this picture, you, you see the 12th Doctor giving a uh, birthday uh, celebratory cake to Max Maxwell Edison. You got Frobisher dancing with, I believe, Sharon Davis at the, at the back there. You got uh -huh. Destry having some drinks with some woman. Um, I, think, I think the character's name is Magenta Price there at the back. So, like, if you're going to bring up all, all these uh, obscure random characters, why don't you give them a place to hang out on the show, that is? Sure, and then you can stuff it full of Satanists and have Canine come and sort it uh, out. Well, yes. I, I should have I should have known you were going in that direction. Mm -hmm. but, Smart uh, direction. But you, know what, but you know what I can say about that direction? Mm -mm. That is a story for another time. Oh, all right. Very good. So, uh, besides Charlie Pollard, obviously, any, any of the things we talked about today really stand out to you? I just had a couple extra, actually, uh, that okay. I would have had in. Um, one, I would have added in uh, Clockwork Men from the Time Works episode that they did, oh, where, they okay. where they live in the tick of the talk in the... They're just blank people that erase people out of history. Well, and nobody even notices they were there. I well, really like that episode. Let me, let me see if I can uh, find uh, that. Sure. They're just, I don't even, they don't even have faces. They just kind of come in. I will... Yeah. There you go. The clockwork, man. I don't know why, but that episode always stands out to me. There, I found found several good pictures. Uh, okay. Keep talking. Keep talking. Yeah. So yeah, uh, they will. They come in like they basically prune people when their time is basically up. I believe in this episode, uh, and people don't, never even knew that they were there. So they take them right out of time. And it's a good episode. It's a good Charlie Do Ace Doctor episode. One that just for some reason was an earworm for me and some I just remember every once in a while. It's, it's, it's definitely an episode that sticks with you. Yeah. Just that maybe it's that whole tick of the talk thing, which I think is so dumb, but it's still, but I remember it to this day. So there you <laughs> go. So it did it. So it did its job. Uh, and I had one other addition that I think would have been good for the show. And that's the headhunter from the new. Lucy oh Rollins. yes, I cannot believe I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, uh, another mercenary slash bounty hunter type, uh, usually for evil. I will say sometimes. Usually, uh, sometimes she has to do the masterish things and help out at the end or whatever. If she's uh, if things have gone a little too far gone, she has to help out the doctor set things back right. But always seems to. Show up again, paid for by somebody else to do nasty work, terrible work. Pick up Cybermen, for example. So, yeah, the headhunter. The, like, really, I'm not a huge fan of the Lucy Miller stories. But I'm I am, not a I'm, fan of the Lucy Miller character. Yeah. The stories are all right. Yeah, I guess I should say that. The character, I don't like. The, some of the, most of the stories are good. Uh, yeah, I'm just a, a big fan of Headhunter. When uh, Headhunter is in an episode, you're like, where's Headhunter? Well, there she is. Yeah. So how far are, uh, are you into the stories? I just finished Death in Blackpool. Ooh. So you're very far, very far in advance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a nice little Christmassy kind of one or whatever with more more and more whining from, you know, from from, no. from Lucy. So, but you know, uh, it's Auntie Pat is there. Uh, is yeah. she though? Yeah. Well, that's what. Well, yeah. Well, as we know, no. But 
anti Pat in the version of the what are they called? Zygon. Zygon. Not the Zynog. The Zygon. But they're Zynogs as well. Which is and, I think a nice a nice thing they made up for the show. No. Yeah. And, so yeah, Headhunter's great. She should be on it. And maybe not uh, Karen. They could have. They could have somebody else. Other yeah, I, they can. They can you know, just take Karen out of it. Yeah, yeah. And but, just yeah. take Lucy out of it for mm-hmm. that matter. Lucy's out, gone. And just for reference, this is the uh, the clock, the clock where people. Yeah. Uh, and, you, and here's a scene from that episode as well. Oh, they have a car- They have comics for it. I didn't know that. Yeah, they. I think they think it was from um. They sort of took section. They had, they had a time where they took sections from select Big Finish episodes and just made a page uh, on the Doctor Who magazine. Oh, okay. Out of it. So I mean, that's, that, that's where that, that came from before nice. the show came back properly. Right. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, that's our list. And uh, where can uh, the good people of the interwebs find you, my good friend? Oh, boy. Well, you can find me over at Let's Get Ready Network, the highlights, talking English Premier League football with my pal Adelia. That happens Tuesdays. We just run over uh, everything that's happened in the English Premier League the week before or that week. Uh, Go through the matches, the things that have happened, news, etc. It's Tuesdays on Let's Get Ready Network, the highlights. Thursdays, Rewatchers Council. Uh, the Buffy the Vampire rewatch series we're doing. Uh, I'm very happy we've done this. It's something I've wanted to do for years and years and years. Uh, we have now, or we are about to record uh, our eighth episode for uh, iRobot Eugene, and that'll be coming out Thursday, a Willow centric episode for everybody who's interested in Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I can't wait to talk about it. And uh, thanks for having me on. 50. Oh, and happy Hanukkah. I didn't even say happy Hanukkah. Yeah, I hope you had a nice I hope you had a nice Hanukkah. Anyways. Well, I mean, considering everything that's been happening recently, a happy Hanukkah was probably out of the question, but it was a Hanukkah nonetheless. Sure. And uh, you can find me uh, not celebrating Hanukkah uh, on my own YouTube channel, 50 Shades of Geek, where I do weekly reviews of every single dog episode from 1963 all the way up to 2023. And you can also find me every Monday on this show and every Thursday on Fun with Flags with my good buddy Soda. And you can also check out all the other channels from the wider Benverse at large, like Something to Talk About, Galaxy Geeks, Multiverse of Geekdom, Movie Loves Unite, The Midnight Cinema, H Reviews, and of course, In the Front Row, which is still not picture in this list, but still worth uh, checking into. So, uh, yeah, this has been us. These are all the characters I th- we all think should come back to Doctor Who. And uh, can I rely on you for next week to do a ranking of uh, all the characters that from the classic, modern, and expanded media stuff that we want to see back? I should be good to go. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, thank you all for watching if you have. And uh, until the next one, everybody, in the words of Missy herself. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.